Hey boys, it's Harm Nun. Today we're going to be going over the 10 best vehicles for off-roading in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now unfortunately, two of the vehicles that are on this list have actually been removed from the game uh, from being able to be purchased, and both of them have come up in Simeon's dealership very recently, so it's going to be a while until we're able to get these again, I feel like, unless you can manage to get them through your auto shop with your customer delivery cars. Now, some of these vehicles are actually really good for the off-road class races in GTA Online, and some of them are just going to be a little bit better for like rock crawling and that sort of thing, just in free mode. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started with number 10. At number 10, we have the brand new Vapid Rattel. Coming in at $1,873,000, this was released with the Los Santos Mercenaries DLC into GTA Online. The Vapid Retail is rear-wheel drive only, so it's not going to be a very good vehicle for like climbing mountains and that sort of thing. However, it is really good for going fast over a relatively straight and bumpy surface, or even if it's a little bit twisty like a dirt road, it's going to do pretty good. It's just not going to be very good for doing, you know, almost vertical hill climbs and stuff like that. It's got a good amount of customization and it is pretty fast. The only thing that I find very strange with the Rattel is it seems to have a very weird weight balance. It's kind of long and skinny, so it kind of tends to fall over a little bit sometimes, especially if you're going really fast through a corner, so you will have to just watch out for that. Overall, I think it is a really cool car. I'm glad we have it now online. It is a little bit overpriced in my opinion, but that's besides the point. Overall, it's a good vehicle. Look into getting a Vapid Rattel. Here at number 9, we have one of the fastest off-road class vehicles in GTA Online for racing. This is the Maxwell Vagrant. Coming in at $1,660,500 if you have the trade price, and if you don't have the trade price, it's going to run you $2,214 thousand dollars which is kind of a uh, kind of a lot for this vehicle however it is still really good it's the second fastest four-wheeled off-road class vehicle in the game for circuit racing or for sprint racing or really any kind of off-road racing i like the vagrant a lot it's based off the aerial nomad in real life which is a pretty cool off-road vehicle the vagrant has a very very fast uh, turning response to it which is pretty neat however it does seem to have a bit of an understeer issue so that's why it's ranked pretty high on this list overall it is still a really good vehicle though it is quite fast it's rear wheel drive similar to the vapid rattel but it handles a lot better than the vapid rattel generally i would say and i think that it puts the power down just a little bit better as well it's a good looking vehicle it's got some nice customization overall definitely one that i would recommend looking into for sure especially if you plan to do off-road class races at number eight we have the vapid riata coming in at three hundred and eighty thousand dollars this is one of the vehicles that was removed that i was touching on at the beginning of this video this is more of a rock crawling vehicle i would say definitely you would use this one more so in free mode than you would in a race Pretty sure if you did a race with the Riata, you'd probably lose. It's got some really good ground clearance and has a ton of customization. It's based off of the original Ford Bronco, which is pretty awesome as well. And you can customize this thing to look however you want to. You can have it with the canopy on, you can have it with the canopy off. The suspension when it's fully raised is super, super tall. Now, the only problem with that is this thing is a little bit top heavy as well sometimes. So it will tip over kind of similar to the Vapid Rattel, although the Riata is a much taller vehicle. So you're gonna have to watch out for that but as far as rock crawling and stuff like that goes the riata is pretty much one of the best vehicles in the entire game for that sort of thing it can even go through water pretty easily because obviously the engine is raised pretty high up so you will be able to get through water pretty easily with this that's about it for the vapid riata let's move on to number seven and number seven we have the other vehicle that's been removed this is of course the Anis Helion and it goes for $835,000 if you were able to purchase it of course. The Helion is based off of a Nissan Patrol in real life, at least largely. There are some other elements of other vehicles in there as well, but for the most part it's based off of a Nissan Patrol. And this is a really, really good off-roader. Now it's got a nice little oversteer bias to it, so it's going to allow your front end to turn in a little bit quicker than it otherwise would, which is kind of nice because a lot of the off-road vehicles don't seem to do that. So the Anis Helion is kind of a breath of fresh air in that regard. It's also got some really cool customization that you can do to it. In fact, it even has a twin turbo kit that you can put on the motor and the exhausts will stick out of the hood, which is pretty sick if you ask me. It is all wheel drive, of course, so you can climb completely vertically in it relatively easily. It's got good brakes and it will pretty much take you anywhere that you need to go in GTA Online. The Helion is definitely more so suited for free mode play, I would say, rather than racing, but I'm sure you could use it in races and you wouldn't do horribly, that's for sure. Let's move on to, uh, to number six. 
At number 6 we have the brand new Meibatsu Monstrosity coming in at $1,485,000. Now this vehicle has Imani tech that you can put on it so you can put a missile lock on jammer on this thing and if you're on the expanded edition of the game you can also put an HSW upgrade on this car as well. So that can help it to be a little bit faster but even on last gen NPC which is what I'm on this thing is still super, super fast when you upgrade it. It makes a great little rally car and it'll pretty much take you anywhere that you want to go. Now, the only problems that the monstrosity is going to run into, first being it does not have much ground clearance. So it's not going to be super great for rock crawling. And the other thing is too, it's a little bit top heavy as well. And because it's such a small vehicle, the top of it will kind of want to swing over on you and, uh, and flip you down an embankment into a river. So... So you kind of got to watch out for that with the monstrosity, but beyond that, it is an absolutely fantastic vehicle. It's got such a good turning radius as well. So you're going to be able to navigate in between rocks and stuff like that pretty easily with this, but you're going to have to be careful though, because it is pretty fast and coupled with the problem that it has of kind of flipping over on its lid, you might end up doing that to yourself and falling down a cliff. So just be advised about that. Uh, but the monstrosity is a great vehicle, definitely one to look into. And number five, this is the Karen Evron. It goes for $1,475,000. And a thing about the Karen Evron, it's not under the off-road category on Southern San Andreas Super Autos. It's actually under the luxury category for some reason. I don't know what Rockstar was thinking, but the Karen Evron, regardless of that, is a great vehicle. It's got super big tires, so you're gonna be able to roll over rocks, no problem at all. And it's also lifted very, very high. So you're gonna have no problem off-roading with this thing, rock crawling, doing anything that you want to do. The Karen Everon is gonna be able to do that for you and do it very convincingly as well. It's a pretty fast truck. It's got a lot of customization that can be done to it. And even if Rockstar did remove it from the game, you can actually get this one in the auto shop, but luckily you can still buy it, so that's good. The Everon is honestly a pretty underrated off-roader in the game, and I think the reason for that mostly is because nobody can find where you actually go to buy it. So that's kind of an issue that Rockstar has uh, shot themselves in the foot with, with the Everon. But yeah, it is a very, very good off-roader, guys. Um, you can rock crawl all the way along the canyon like you guys can see that I'm doing right now in the Everon and it is a very convincing off-roader. You definitely need to look into getting an Everon. It's a fantastic vehicle. Now at number four we have the brand new Declassy Walton L35 coming in at $1,670,000 which honestly is a little bit overpriced I'm not gonna lie. However the Walton is pretty good because it does have a lot of ground clearance and it is pretty fast in a straight line. However it does kind of suffer from the same issue of like wanting to topple over a little bit because because it doesn't quite have the widest stance ever. It does have a pretty wide stance, but it could be just a little bit wider, and I feel like it would be a much better vehicle. But for $1,700,000, it is kind of overpriced, I'm not gonna lie, but it is really cool at the same time. So the Walton, uh, it'll pretty much take you anywhere that you wanna go. It is all wheel drive, of course. It looks really good. It's got some nice customization. The performance backs it all up, and you know, realistically, it is just a great off-roader to have, despite its uh, pretty high price tag. And number three, we have the Vapid Caracara 4x4, coming in at $875,000. This is available on Southern San Andreas Super Autos. The Caracara is a fantastic off-roader in GTA Online. It's based off of the Ford F-150, or maybe even the Raptor, depending on how you customize it and how you upgrade it. There are quite a few customization options that you can put onto the Caracara to customize it and make it more personal. So that is obviously a nice thing to have. Now on top of this, the Caracara is actually extremely fast in a straight line. This thing has really, really good acceleration. The handling on top of that is quite awesome as well. It's got a decent enough stance and it doesn't seem to want to topple over despite this thing being very long and very skinny. It's super realistic looking though and it's very good off-road, no doubt about it. In the off-road category for racing, the Caracara is actually within the top 10. It is pretty quick around a circuit, so that is something to keep in mind. And for 875 grand, I honestly feel like this truck is kind of a bargain, honestly. That's really all I have to say about the Caracara though. Let's move on to number two. And number two, we have one of the best sleeper picks in the entire game. This is the Canis Camacho coming in at $345,000, which is by far the cheapest vehicle on this list. It's even cheaper than the Vapid Riata, and the Canis Camacho is one of the fastest off-roaders in the entire game. The Camacho is kind of like the Tauros of the SUVs category, but for the off-roads category. It's so cheap and it has such good performance that it's like, why would you not buy a Camacho? Why would you buy anything but a Camacho, pretty much? Um, because it's placed very high in the off-road category for the four wheeled vehicles. 
It's got some great customization as well. It's fun to drive and I think it actually looks pretty good. Like for it being kind of a weird concept for a vehicle, I think it actually looks phenomenal. I think it's really cool. There's a lot you can do to this thing. You can have it with a roof, without a roof. You can have it with stuff in the back, without stuff in the back. You can pretty much do whatever you want to do to a Camacho and it is going to be a very, very good vehicle for racing as well and for free mode alike. So that's it for the Canis Camacho. Let's move on to the number one best off-roader in GTA Online. Of course, it is the Declassy Draugr. The Declassy Draugr is the best four-wheeled off-roader in the entire game. It's going to go for $1,402,500 if you have the trade price unlocked and $1,870,000 if you do not have the trade price unlocked. The Declassy Draugr has overtaken the Maxwell Vagrant that we looked at a little bit earlier in this list as being the best four-wheeled off-roader in the entire game. The Vagrant is only rear-wheel drive, and this is all-wheel drive, and it is very, very fast. The acceleration and the off-the-line speed are just insane. The top speed is also pretty high, and the handling on the Draugr is extremely responsive. It's actually a super fun vehicle to drive, and it will pretty much take you anywhere on the map that you want to go without asking any questions and without having any sort of problem. You know, it doesn't have the most customization ever, so that's kind of the not so fun part of the Draugr, but for the most part, it is an absolutely phenomenal off-roader and it is definitely one that I would recommend looking into 100%. So there you have it, guys. That's it for my picks for the top 10 best off-roaders in Grand Theft Auto Online. Let me know if you think I missed anything in the comments down below. Obviously, I know that I didn't include a Sand King on this list. I think it was a little too obvious to include a Sand King. I, I think that that's kind of a given. 45 grand for a Sand King, and yeah, you can go off road, that's for sure. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. If not, dislike. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.